Good afternoon, so uh, I've just come back from Flying Legends over the weekend, um, which was a fantastic spectacle. Hopefully a few of you had the chance to attend as well. Um, had a fantastic weekend. I was a little bit concerned about the lineup as it felt a little bit, I wouldn't say stale, but a little bit safe, I think, by a Flying Legend standards. And it didn't really have that wow factor aircraft. Um, and it shows you how spoiled we've become that we actually think in that sort of way. Because, you know, where else would you see 15 Spitfires, you know, two Mustangs, a B-17, and then a 24-ship Balbo at the end, while a Cephia and a Bearcat are doing uh, synchro aerobatics? You know, not very many places in the world, probably with the exception of Chino. Um, that's the only place you see that. But it just felt like the, the lineup was a little bit safe. But the flying was absolutely magnificent. You know, really, really enjoyed the five Bouchon. Uh, spectacle of so flew together as a five ship uh, in a five ship formation on the Sunday. They didn't do that on the on the Saturday. Um, there was a DH nine debut which I actually missed because I left a little bit earlier on the Sunday. Yeah, really really good show. Um, and you know a little bit sad that I had doubted that it would be that good. Um, but of course as always it purely delivered and roll on twenty twenty. Uh, hopefully to see some new and uh, new rest restorations come through the pipeline and make the debut. So. Why am I talking about Flying Legends? Well, the reason I'm talking about Flying Legends right in front of me is the haul I got at Flying Legends. I'll go through them very briefly in a minute, uh, one by one. Um, but for the first time in, in some years, Duxford had a pretty decent die cast selection this year. There was at least five stalls to die cast on. There was one which was entirely jets on one of the aviation bookstalls and they had some fantastic pieces. The only thing I would add is that a lot of them were at RRP, if not a little bit more. Um, but as I've proven by looking at this, um, some of them, some bargains can be found. Um, and there's a little bit of a selection here, uh, and I'll go through them one by one. So the first aircraft um, I bought is technically not a die cast, it's actually a easy model P51B stroke C. Uh, this example being a B with the Malcolm Hood, as you can see. Very reminiscent of uh, Berlin Express, which sadly departed Duxford the day before Flying Legends to go and do some, looks like some aerial filming in Switzerland. Um, so this one is of course the famous Old Crow, a lovely addition to the D-Day shelf with the, the full stripes on the fuselage and wings. Um, with the Easy Model P51Bs, I'll show you the selection they do by, if I turn over the, over the, over the box here. They do five aircrafts, they do a Blue Noser, a Bodney Blue Noser, uh, an RAF uh, Mustang Free, I think it is, um, Hun Hunter uh, of Texas, which also departed uh, Duxford on the Thursday, and of course Captain Do Don Gentile's Shangri La, which I have in P51D form by um, Colgate. As you know, notice uh, they all got this horrible bazooka thing underneath the uh, wings there. So I have made the decision to remove it off of mine because I just think it looks hideous. Um, if I show you on the bottom. I managed to get it off pretty neatly actually. It looks like I need to replace it, either touch it up with a bit of white paint or put some drop tags on there if uh, I want to be fussy uh, to try and save it. I had to do a little bit of straightening of the undercarriage legs and the doors as well, because obviously it's plastic built. But the actual build is quite nice and Gemini make a version of this, but it's never ever managed to fall into my hands. So I sort of, you know, for 10 quid, thought this would be a decent acquisition. Uh, and lo and behold, it does look all right. And it looks look relatively nice next to the Mustang collection. The second aircraft I've got is a P51D or Mustang 4 by um, Easy Model. I'll show you the selection they do on the back of here. I know they certainly do Stinger, which um, has been done by Corgi. So if we have a look there, so we've got obviously Jackie at the bottom, which is one I've got. You've then got a checker towel version, um, which has got the name, I don't think I can read that on there to be fair. No, I can't read it. We've then got Royal Australian Air Force version, um, Lou 4, famous Mustang, uh, the 375th, and the, and the top one there, um, you've also got another sort of green and yellow checker towel version. So this thankfully doesn't come with any hideous bazookas on it. Uh, it doesn't come with any drop tanks, which is a shame, so if I've got a spare set of drop tanks, I will attach them to this. Um, it's from the 356 Fighter Group uh, based at Marlsham. As you remember, when I went to Vegas last week, I managed to pick up this one, which is Millie, 
uh, also from the same squadron. So I've gone from not one aircraft in that squadron to two. Uh, this is a very, very famous aircraft because Jackie was the name uh, of a German Shepherd that used to go up with the, the pilot uh, in his aircraft on a regular basis. Uh, and it's also one of the aircraft schemes suggested. So when uh, Anglia Air Restorations first started, uh, one of my good friends, James, suggested this as one of the schemes for the now what is Contrary Mary, which was then Miss Velma. They had a competition to suggest which aircraft to, to use. And I actually went with Millie and he went with Jackie. So quite, um, quite a nice looking scheme. Um, you know, obviously the same squadron as Dan Yankee, if anyone's ever seen that um, come over from Holland. Really, really nice red, uh, and blue diamond scheme. I think it really does look the part and they look lovely together in the shelf. The final US aircraft um, that I managed to acquire this weekend is this beautiful 5x5 P47 D30 of the 362nd Fighter Group uh, based in Straubing in Germany uh, around about the end of hostilities uh, in 1945. Um, this is when they originally were cyber hobbies. It comes on a plain black plinth, as you can see. And the other difference as well is that most of the P-47s have interchangeable um, canopies. This one is just a sliding canopy, uh, as you can see, which is a lot easier to do. And looking as the undercarriage looks like it's about to collapse there. Um, so I'm gonna leave that while we're still uh, managing to sit quite comfortably. Again, all the pingy bits. So the, um, obviously the aerial um, there as well, which is, you know, a bit of a pain to pop in, but you've got to be very careful with it. Lovely looking aircraft, and it obviously goes alongside the other aircraft produced in the series by Dragon, uh, Saucy Susie and Big Ass Baby as well. Uh, so having a trio from the same squadron is quite a nice little touch. Um, very similar to obviously the Big and Hill trio spits. Uh, another aircraft I managed to acquire was this nice little witty um, ME109G6. Um, in Italian Air Force markings. Not one, I've managed to see this a few times over the years and never managed to acquire it. Really, I didn't even realize so I got it out of the box. It's got the Italian insignia over the Balkan Kraus on the wings there as well, as well as obviously the Italian flag and on the rudder as well. Nice little aircraft um, and very, very nice to have a look at the, the rest of the ME109 collection. Another aircraft I managed to acquire was the new Atlas version, which is obviously the old Ixo mold. Uh, of the late Mark Stuka of Heinz Ulrich uh, Rudel uh, in his tank buster scheme. I've got the similar one from Ixo, but this is obviously a better sort of finish, no panel lines, nice paint and crisp uh, finish there in the end. Uh, very strange, it comes in the box with the, wh the wheels actually off. So you need to actually put the wheels on, which is the only sort of type of model that I know that needs that. And it's not up quite to the Corgi standards, but again, a nice little addition to the uh, tank buster theme and Eastern Front. Now onto the Imperial Japanese Navy. So I managed to acquire this AGM M30. Uh, and hopefully I'll get his name right. It's of Hiroyoshi Nishisawa of 19, in 1943. Uh, the reason I really wanted this one uh, is because uh, the, uh, sorry, the Texas Flying Legends used to have a zero. I think it's moved on to pastures new. I think it's moved to New York. But it used to have a very similar scheme zero. It might even be the same aircraft. Um, in this sort of colour, and I've not got a zero in this sort of colour, I've got them all sort of various colours. Would love to see the Flying Heri Heritage Collection Zero, uh, the two seat one made at some point. Um, it's quite a radically different scheme, but I thought it was something different for the shelf. And again, you know, silly money, it's really worth a good a punt. And you know, the, the paint scheme is gorgeous on it, really nice little model, uh, and will sit nicely on the shelf for the rest of the, the Imperial Japanese Navy. The final aircraft. Uh, I managed to acquire is part of the Diagostini Japanese aircraft range, which I featured a few weeks ago. Uh, I covered four of them off. And this one's of the Nakajima Ki-84 Hiate, or Frank, as it was known in the Allied Air Force. Um, again, this has been made by XA before, but I never managed to acquire one. It's quite a menacing looking aircraft, actually. Um, very similar to the XA-1, of course, but of course no heavy panel lining. Really nice looking finish. Uh, again, you know, it adds a little bit of variation to your Japanese aircraft collection. I have actually um, contacted the Agostini and asked a question about whether they're planning to release it in the UK, but I've not yet had an answer. So that's it from this week. We've got a quite exciting uh, few weeks coming up. So we've got the B-17 uh, from Colgill on its way out, Flak Eater, and of course we've got the um, Adolf Hitler Immelmann II JU-52, uh, which is relatively um, on the horizon quite soon. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the weekend at Legends and hopefully you enjoyed this little video review. 
Um, Corgi are about to announce two new releases at Riat this, this week at some point. I've shared the Aerodrome and Diecast Diaries post on the page. Um, from what we can guess um, as a tease, it looks like it's going to be two of the special towel tornadoes we're guessing, and I'm stress the word guessing, uh, it's going to be the camo version and the back one, and hopefully the third one to follow at some point. And of course, obviously, the exciting news that Hobby Master have um, managed to get the Eurofighter uh, Typhoon mold. Um, they've just released a pre image of it, and it looks very, very nice, which opens the door to many, many schemes. Hopefully, the D Day Bird scheme from a few years back that will certainly look nice uh, amongst the D Day shells if we do manage to get it. Um, and that's about it for me. As always, any feedback, questions, uh, let us know and we'll see if we can answer them. Have a great week, and I'll speak to you soon.